Let's talk about how pressure varies within a system. We're going to use the term head a lot, and I, I looked it up in the um, dictionary, well, on the web, of course. And the uh, definition that comes, and that makes a lot of sense to me, it seems to come from the old hydro industry where head was intended to mean a volume of water held at a height. So you can see there'd be a lot of energy there available if that water were released down below to drive some mechanism. That's what they uh, called head. So we, uh, we know we've been through the formula for head versus pressure and head within a um, pump system will be static head, will be friction head, and if we need at any point we can convert to pressure and we've been through that. So let's take a look at a typical system. We're going to see all these points where I'd like to discuss what the pressure or the head would be at that point. So point one is the surface of the tank. Point one is that atmosphere, so there's no pressure there. So the pressure is zero. Point two is right before we get to the suction at the outlet of the tank. So at that point, we have the pressure corresponding to the height of liquid there. So we could use the formula if we wanted to figure out what the pressure is there. Point three is right before the pump. Well, between two and three, we're at the same height. So three essentially would be the same pressure as two minus a little bit of friction loss in that uh, pipe. Point four is uh, the pressure that's developed by the pump. Point five is right under the tank where we're going to. So as we go up, we're going to lose pressure, right? Because we have less weight of water. So the pressure corresponding at point five will be the pressure at four minus the pressure corresponding to that height minus any friction loss uh, there is between those two points. And finally, we get to point six. And at that point, again, there is zero pressure, right? Because we're at atmosphere. So let's take another a look at another system, very similar but different. Now we have a tank that's lower down and the pump is pulling water, if you want, uh, up upwards to another tank. Point one again is the pressure at the surface of the uh, uh, liquid of the tank, which is zero. Point two is within the pipe as it goes back up. So if we go to the end of the pipe, we have some certain amount of pressure uh, at the end of that pipe due to the water height, but as we go back up, that pressure drops because we're going up. And it's going to drop a bit more than the height because we have friction in between those two points. Point three, we go back up, we lose pressure again because of friction because we're, we're going up in height. So if we're going up in height, the pressure has to drop. In fact, now we'll probably be below atmospheric pressure at that point. Point four is the entrance uh, of, the, of the pump. So it's, this, it's uh, the same pressure level as three minus a little bit of friction. Point five is the increase in pressure that we get from the pump. And point six is the outlet of the pipe. So we're, go we're going to atmosphere at that point. So at six, we have no pressure. So between five and six, we've gone up, we've lost pressure due to friction, and we've come to zero because we're just going into the atmosphere. There's, there's a conception with a lot of people, and, and, and uh, I'm not surprised at this because a lot of people give this a lot of thought, that the pressure in a pump system is the same everywhere. Of course it's not the same because we're going up, we're going around. Uh, as we go up, we lose pressure. As we go down, we gain. And as we come out to atmosphere at a pipe, there is no pressure. So even though there's a lot of flow, it looks like there's pressure, but there's actually no pressure at that point. The last system we're going to look at is a similar system again. We're pumping lower, but we're going back into a tank over and back in. So if we look at point six, point six will be quite high uh, and the pressure will be low there because uh, we're much higher than the surface level of the tank. So the pressure has to be low. Point seven is a similar uh, level of pressure, but even quite even a bit lower because uh, there's friction between six and seven. As we drop down, pressure increases. At point eight, we'll have the pressure corresponding to that liquid of level in the tank. And point nine, again, is the uh, pressure at the surface level, which is zero. So what happens if we put a control valve at that point, at, uh, right before the tank? Well, control valves are less and less used nowadays because we're using variable frequency drives, but they're still there, and there's still a lot of um, older systems that have them. Well, if we put the valve there, uh, 
you see this a lot and uh, it's quite common. The chances of this valve cavitating, and we'll talk a little bit about cavitation later, is, 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 is not functioning properly due to low pressure is great because we will have low pressure at that point at the inlet of the valve as we've just seen. So a valve operates best when there's a certain amount of pressure at its, uh, at its inlet so that it can drop that pressure and control. If we bring it low pressure, it's not going to operate as well. So a better location for a control valve would be closer to the pump discharge where we know there's a large amount of pressure and then we can control that valve control better the flow at that point. The following video I made some time ago, it's, um, it's a small uh, pump system that I used to carry around with me when I did some presentations so they can actually see how pressure varies uh, within a system. So I've got a small tank, I've got a pump that's submerged in the tank. It pumps up into a uh, upper reservoir. The reservoir drains back into the tank uh, so that it's in a cycle. And I don't have to keep bringing out water. Um, how pressure is determined is I have this little three-way valve in the tube. And if I open the valve, then if there's pressure at that point, then water will come out. If there's no pressure, the, the valve, no water, I mean, if, if the pressure is atmosphere, no water will come out. If there's less than atmosphere, then air will be sucked in. So depending on where I put this three-way valve, you can see what the pressure is at that point co corresponding to the rest of the equipment in the system. So let's take a look. Hi. This experiment will show how pressure varies in the discharge line of a uh, typical pump system um, or uh, let's say perhaps a bit more of an industrial uh, type than, uh, than you would see in a home environment. So what I have is a uh, small reservoir containing water, a centrifugal pump, a discharge line that is pumping fluid up into an upper reservoir, up over, and the reservoir itself is being drained back into the tank so I can recirculate the water. What I want to show you is how the pressure varies in this discharge line here, especially in this region here that's above uh, the level of the uh, upper tank. You see that it's quite surprising uh, what, uh, what we'll see in a second. What I'm going to do is install this three-way valve in this line here. Now this valve is um, three, has three ways, three ways of channeling fluid and go straight from here to here, let the fluid go right by, or the fluid can come up into this uh, exit point here from this direction or from that direction. So if I want the fluid to go straight by, the valve will handle will be in this direction. If I want the fluid to come out through the uh, middle port, I will just rotate the handle for the fluid to come out in that direction. What this does is this can act as a pressure detector because if I have positive pressure uh, in the uh, discharge line, fluid will come out once the valve is properly positioned, the, uh, the middle port. If there's uh, no pressure, no fluid will come out and if there's negative pressure or pressure below atmospheric pressure in the top part, then air will be sucked in. So this little valve can, interestingly enough, will act as our pressure detector for positive, zero, or negative, meaning less than atmospheric pressure. So my pump is running. Everything is uh, more or less in equilibrium. I'm going to install the uh, pressure detector in this part of the line. So I'm going to use a connector here that will allow me to get from the uh, three valve back into the tank. And make sure the valve is closed for now and I'll start up the system again. Now, the position of this valve and once I open it, of course, uh, so that fluid can either enter or, or, I mean, fluid can either exit or enter, will tell me what the pressure is in this position of the, uh, the discharge line. So, for example, if I open the valve now, 
water is coming out, as you can see. So this means that at this position in the system, there is positive pressure. As I go up, you'll see that the, uh, the uh, flow in this uh, valve will start to diminish. We get to a certain point where there's, there's no flow, this point here. So at this point in the system, there's actually zero pressure on the line. If I keep going up higher, air will be sucked into the line, as you can hear now. And if I come back down, I'll put back to zero point pressure and here back to positive pressure. So you can see that for a, uh, a uh, line with, uh, that comes into the top of a tank, there's pretty well always going to be a, a part of that line that's under vacuum or has low atmospheric pressure. Now, further, the further interesting point here is the uh, position of, uh, of the uh, zero pressure occurs at a point a little bit higher than the, uh, the level in the upper tank. And that's due to the friction that's in the system. So if there were no friction, I would expect to see zero pressure at the same level as uh, the upper tank is here. And of course, since there's always friction, then there will be a difference. And that difference corresponds to the friction head. So there you have it. With this simple uh, little device here, this three-way valve, we're able to tell what the level of pressure is in the discharge line. And this could be useful to you to know because uh, if you're very much higher up before you get into your tank, your pressure might be low enough that the liquid that you're uh, transporting will vaporize. We know that if uh, pressure gets so very low, a uh, liquid can vaporize. And then we have uh, liquid in uh, vapor and it's difficult for the pump to pump at the rate that we want. Also imagine that if you're trying to put a connection here to another system because you need to distribute uh, this fluid to another uh, another area, well of course you will never be able to distribute because the low pressure here will mean that the fluid or air is sucked in from that other area instead of going to it. So if you want to distribute fluid to another area, you always need to be closer to the pump or you're sure you have positive pressure. Of course, uh, this detection method uh, is not something that you can use uh, in practice uh, in, a, uh, in an industry because obviously uh, all the piping is fixed. It's made of steel and uh, not tubes and uh, there's no way you can move uh, such a device around. But the idea is to show uh, how pressure varies and to introduce the concept because most people just don't uh, realize that uh, there is a significant variation in pressure and you need you need to know where it's likely to occur and what problems could be caused by that. So you can't do this physically, but this type of uh, exercise can be done mentally, so calculations can be done, which will show exactly at what point you hit zero pressure, at what point you hit negative pressure, etc. So uh, that's it, and good luck.